This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Here are some things we noticed in the news this week. Republican vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan's big speech at his party's convention presented a problem for corporate media. Journalists have cheered Ryan's supposed wonkiness. So how do you square that reputation with the rather obvious lies Ryan told in Tampa? We saw some fact checking, along with some disturbing suggestions that truth might not matter that much. But on the eve of the Tampa convention, Time Magazine had a piece that touted Ryan's wonkiness, how could it not, but really zeroed in on his influences, including his religion. Quote, Ryan may be known as a numbers man, but he's also a devout Catholic who follows his church's lead on social issues, close quote. This is a conventional corporate media approach to religion where social issues means gay marriage and abortion. Catholics, of course, care about much more than that, and many activists and academics have loudly criticized Ryan's budget plans for violating what they consider core Catholic teachings about social justice. Ryan's proposals were strongly criticized by the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops and were the focus of the recent Nuns on the Bus tour. Maybe the nuns and bishops don't follow the church's teachings as closely as Paul Ryan? Well, Time sidelines the critics and declares that, quote, his mission to reduce spending is partly inspired, he said in April, by the Vatican, close quote. Well, now it's not Time's place to render a verdict on whether or not Paul Ryan is a good Catholic, but it is a little odd, journalistically speaking, to let the subject of a piece declare that he's doing exactly what the Pope would want especially when there's plenty of evidence that cutting taxes for the wealthy is not, in fact, what Jesus was all about. What's going on over at Fox? Well, host Bill O'Reilly gave his viewers a very Bill O'Reilly glimpse of how he planned to cover the RNC from the no-spin zone. As you may know, we cover politics a bit differently here. We're not much on party propaganda or political bloviating. O'Reilly said his show isn't about Republicans are good and Democrats are bad. We're not in the business of promoting any political party, as he put it. But it took mere seconds for O'Reilly to show that he didn't mean it. For example, the speakers at the Republican convention have largely been selected to negate Democratic propaganda, while the speakers at the Democratic convention next week in Charlotte are largely on stage to inflame the liberal base. All right, so Republicans are propaganda busters while the Democrats are base inflamers. O'Reilly explained that Republicans are moderate and honest. The GOP presentation is largely fact-based, he said. But the speakers at the Democratic convention, on the other hand, would be zealots like Georgetown law student Sandra Fluck, a pair of abortion extremists, and even, if you can believe it, a lesbian. By contrast, O'Reilly said the far right was neutralized at the Republican convention, and he seems to be including the vice presidential candidate and Rick Santorum and on and on. It's almost perfect in its self-negation. If this was satire, it was a job well done. And finally, Andrea Seabrook was until recently a Capitol Hill reporter for NPR. She's moved on to a new independent reporting project, but what she said in Politico about her time at NPR was revealing. Seabrook likened the experience to colluding with the politicians you're covering. So much of what I was doing was actually recording and playing what they say or repeating what they say. The debate in Congress, she said, has become such a complete theater that none of it is real. Quote, I feel like I am, as a reporter in the Capitol, lied to every day, all day, close quote. While Seabrook says her new web-based project will focus on what really matters. So let's think about that for a minute. A reporter at NPR covers lying politicians every day and sees the job as just repeating what it is they're lying about, rather than challenging them. To do things differently and talk about what really matters apparently requires leaving the outlet entirely. That seems like rather a stunning admission that NPR listeners should think about. I'm Janine Jackson. This is FAIR TV.